tear and dig and scrub and pull to get to the treasure. Right. Right. That's the way the gospel is. We must study to show ourselves approved. Jesus wants us to work at the gospel. He wants us to dig for it. He wants us to make an effort that we sacrifice worldly ways that we work to get the treasure that's in the people. Two men traveled the world. And as they got to a third world country, they hired the local missionary to be their guide. And as the missionary took them through the countryside, they came along a field. And there in the field was a young man. And he was laboriously sweating and exerting energy as he pulled the plow through the field. And the older man put his hand upon the plow and guided it along. And one of the men said to the guy, these must really be poor people. And the guy says, yes, they are. But they had an ox. And when we built the local church, they sold their ox to make a sacrifice for the building. And the second man stepped forward and he took the picture and he said to the guy, wow, that really must have been a sacrifice. And the guy says, no. Not for these people. They were just pleased. They had an ox to say. For the joy of it. To have an ox to say. To sacrifice for the goodness of God. This morning some of us sold our ox. For the joy of it. That we can make a gift. Uh -huh. That we could give something good for something bad. But, but, but look, if we stop there, we will miss the picture. Think for a moment of rearing children. It's a 24 seven job of demanding proportions. Amen. And the only way you would not know that is in the event you've not really child. 24-7 demanding proportions. Yes, Lord. Up all hours of the night. Yes, yes. Playing soccer ball, baseball day, football, school obligations, teaching how to catch and throw, whatever there is in the course of the life of a child. But to see that child in their first recital. Oh, to see that child walk across the stage and get a college degree. Amen. For the joy of it. Yes. We sacrifice everything all over again. For the joy of it. When we see the fruit of what we have sacrificed for. Yes. It's no longer a sacrifice. Amen. It's a joy. Yes. Thank God. We have an ox to say. Thank God we invested in the life of a child. We 
We don't complain. We do it again and again and again and again. When we see the joy that comes out of the sacrifice we make, we count it all a joy. I worked 31 years before retiring from a corporate job. Relocated 10 times. On occasion, I did business travel from Sunday night to Friday night. Now Joyce and I count it all a joy. Was it difficult at the time? Yes, it was. But the sacrifices we made is that we gave up something good. Today we have something better. Called a pigeon. <laughs> Amen. We sold our eyes. Now we got the joy of having done something. Today you sold the ox. Count it a joy. Wow. You had an ox to sell. Some folk don't have an ox. The people that was pulling the plow, the two of guys say they sold their ox to make a contribution. This year, they pulled the plow. They knew that when they sold the ox. But why? It was something good, but they knew something better would come. Now we don't always know on the front end what the better is. That's the grace. That's the faith. That's the trust we put in God. But when we do it for the joy of it, we, we didn't make a sacrifice today because Pastor Brown asked. If you do, you look to Pastor Brown for returns. Yeah. Uh -huh. I ain't got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I had $20 when I left home and I didn't get to church with it. I'm glad my sacrifice was in the form of a check made payable to the Russian, so no one could get that other than the Russian. If you made your sacrifice for the Russian, then you'll go tell the world what you did for the Russian. But if you made your sacrifice for the joy of the Lord, you won't say much about it. You'll just be happy that you can make a contribution to the joy of the Lord when you think of all these done for you. Folks don't brag when they do it for God. But when they think it's an earthly entity, It'll be on the front page of the newspaper. Paul the Apostle, writing in 2 Corinthians 12 and 15, said, I will very gladly spend and be spent for you. He's talking to God. I will very gladly spin mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and be spent for you. Yes, yes. Paul was financially supported by friends, encouraged by the church, housed by strangers, beaten by adversaries, stoned by mean men, 
jailed for his beliefs, bitten by a serpent. But Paul laid his life on the line for Jesus. He does so with joy. How many of us can be beaten, treated meanly, run out of town, and then say, I will spend and be spent for you with joy? Why could Paul see joy in these things? Because Paul understood. I am giving up something good because I know in my spirit yes, yes, yes. something better will come up. Yes, and as a result, Paul brought the Gentile world into the church. Oh, the return on an investment in the joy of the Lord. 